ओके सो गुड इवनिंग गर्ल्स गुड इवनिंग नरेश एंड गुड इवनिंग किशोर सो टुडे विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ आवर जेनकिन सेशन सो वी हैड कंप्लीट अप टू जेनकिन डे थ्री सेशन राइट सो इन द डे थ्री सेशन राइट वी हैड आई हैड एक्सप्लेन अबाउट हाउ टू री इंस्टॉल इंस्टॉल द जेनकिन वन मोर टाइम आई हैड शोड यू प्लस आई इवन शोड हाउ एक्जैक्टली यू कैन मेक योर जेनकिन रन इन अ डॉकर कंटेनर right after that what happened right post installation of the jenkins right we saw like uh, we saw the home directory for your jenkins always slash varlib jenkins this is the home directory and these are all the important configuration files which will be there out of which the most important is the workspace as well as the jobs these are the some of the important uh, like uh, uh, configuration file which we have to understand actually or which you have to know minimal okay this is what we had covered and once we install jenkins you know that by default a jenkins user will also get created in the linux machine so whatever the jobs which you are running as part of the jenkins ui uh, at the below in the system level the jenkins user is one who is going to run or execute all those jobs so that's what it is very important for us to understand even that how exactly the jenkins user behaves so if this jenkins user can execute any task it means that in the ui also the same task will work right if the jenkins user cannot run any particular task right even though you configure or you create a job in your ui the job will fail because it will never get executed because the below in the below system the jenkins user if it doesn't have that particular permission right it cannot run that job so this is what we had covered in the day 3 session so today in jenkins day 4 session we would be learning many things today Three zero seven one twenty twenty three. Okay, so what we'll be learning? So we'll be continuing with the Jenkins only today. We'll continue with the Jenkins. We always we use uh, Jenkins to create the CI/CD pipeline, right? We use Jenkins to create CI/CD pipeline. which generally it generally starts from the version control system like for example like git so what i'm trying to tell that actually that you know very well that so there's a developer is there so he's a developer so there's a developer what the developer will do developer will sit in his local system or in his local laptop he will start writing a code whatever the application code he has to write at he start writing the code basically he will try to create one file in that file he will start writing the source code of that application whatever he is he is given for developing right once he completes the development of the application what he will do he will try to keep the whole source code under some control versioning system or into some source code versioning system and we know that git is a very favorable uh, so control versioning system so we have a git server actually or we have a git so which is nothing but it is version control system the version control system correct so now what happened the developer will try to place all this <coughs> source code into this version control system now as part of jenkins what exactly the jenkins will do jenkins is basically used for ci cd pipelining so we have a jenkins server here we have jenkins so what the jenkins will do jenkins will it is used to create even the ci cd pipeline see whenever you want to achieve continuous integration and continuous deployment right we write a pipelines or we write a jobs actually in the jenkins right so what majorly the jenkins job does actually basically it has to pull whatever the code which is there in the source code versioning system to the machine so it has to do the code pull actually it has to do the code pull actually right basically what are the source code is there it has to clone we say it has to clone the code it has to clone the code it means that locally the jenkins will clone the code in the local system or in the jenkins server the whole code will get cloned the whole source code will be cloned and further jenkins is going to uh, uh, jenkins going to run a build on that it means that You need to, you basically need to build or compile what are the code is there into the packages. So that is the ultimate goal of the Jenkins. It means that in the jobs you have mentioned such a way that after doing the code pull, 
basically you need to do some kind of a build activity or you know build activity means you are creating a package or we call it as a binary right so that is a further process of the jenkins it means that basically there will be some kind of a build server will be there right so there is some kind of a build server will be there where what happened right whatever the code which has been pulled from the git server right what the build further finally what happened the build server will be get called and that build server whatever the code you have right in the jenkins server right whatever the code we have right which has been pulled this code right so your build server or remember it is going to compile the code or it is going to create a package it is going to create a package it's going to create a package package is nothing but it's a binary right or it is it's a compiled code so it's going to create a package this is how normally the process happens in the CI/CD pipeline. The initial process happens in the with the help of a CI/CD pipeline. So what we are saying that so we use the Jenkins to create the CI/CD CI/CD pipeline, which generally starts with a version control system like Git. Okay. <coughs> so what is the next step? We need to clone the code and start building a package. Building a package means binaries, we say. Okay. So building a package depends on the language of your application. So it means that guys, like whenever any application is developed by the developer, he is free to choose any language. He might have developed the whole code in the Java language. Or he might have used the .NET language, .NET language, or he might have used C# -sharp or C# -hash language. He might have used Node.js. He might have used Python. He can use any language to write the code or to develop the code. So basically, what happened? Right, each and every language differs actually. So .NET is completely different from Java because Java is a complete a different. Uh, like a uh, high level programming language even the dot net is also high level programming language right so basically what happened what happened right you can develop the application in any language now finally when suppose assume that the developer has chosen the java language to develop the code so once he has completely written the code in the java language the whole java code has to be has to be given to the build server and the build server has to compile the java code so it means that it needs a kind of a tool it needs a tool it needs a tool you need a build tool which can build the java codes actually and the build tool what we are using is either maven or you can use gradle any tool you can use so you can use either use you can use a maven build tool or you can even use the gradle also <coughs> like that way depends upon the language which the developer chooses right there are various different build tools are available so that by using only those with those build tool only you can compile or you can create a package like for example for dotnet you need to have always have a ms build tool right so for the dotnet always you need to have a ms build tool that is a tool build tool which is used to compile any dotnet application ms build right so what it's saying that building a package it depends upon the language of the application what the developer chooses right so what you have to do first so once the code is checked in into the git server what you need to do means you need to first clone the code from the git actually so what have to do you need to do a cloning so guys you have to do the cloning the code from the git actually right see so what so in in this session guys or in in our upcoming uh, jenkins session right what we'll be doing right i'll be taking a uh, some kind of open source code i will be using some open source so i will be using so i will be using some open source java project codes in uh, in our jenkin series so there are many java uh, you know like uh, open source projects are available in the net right you can download the those things or else there are many other applications like for example you can even download the dotnet applications and you can do all build activity right there are many are there like for example if you want to see it there are there are some uh, examples of open source uh, 
Java projects, like for example, Game of Life. This is a very simple uh, Java based application. Like that, we have something known as a Spring Pet Clinic. Okay. So that is okay. And there is a, something like, for example, <clears throat> what are the other things you have? Like there is an example of Open MRS. So open means open MRS. This is also one of the Java based application, open medical record system, which is open MRS project. So we will be using uh, something like uh, what is the application man for the .NET? Uh, I just remember. Yeah, nope, commerce. So this is the .NET open source .NET project actually. So this all these are Java based projects. These are all written in Java language, right? Written in Java. So it, it returns it uses Java, it is written Java plus it it uses the Spring framework also. Uh, Spring Pit Clinic, it uses Java plus it uses the Spring, it uses even the Spring framework also. So open the MRS is also a Java based project actually. .NET is there. Okay, what else is there? Nope Commerce, it's a .NET project and Odoo is there. Odoo project, <coughs> Odoo is there. So there are various uh, free available projects are there guys. So you can use any one of these projects for uh, like for doing any kind of experimental in your Jenkins. Like I want to set up a CICD pipelining. So I can use this project actually. It's an open source. You, you can download this and you can make use of it. <coughs> okay. So now what we'll be doing, right? We'll be cloning from the Git actually. So basically all these projects are in the GitHub. So you will be cloning and these are all open source. So you can directly clone these projects, right? Clone means you can directly copy this from the from your GitHub uh, from the GitHub servers. You can directly copy it and you can make use of it. Okay. So so what exactly we need for so basically what we'll be learning now, like how to clone the project, how to clone the open source projects, open source projects using Jenkins. That's what we'll be learning now as of now. Like for example, what are the things which you needed? So for cloning the code, cloning the code from the git what are exactly you need it so basically i need something like i need a git url like i need a git url for example suppose if i go to the internet and if i if i just say um, game of life github something like that if i give like this so guys you could see that actually here see you are here you got the game of life code so if you click on it it'll directly take you to the uh, GitHub repository where the whole source code is all but can you see here if you just click on here and you could see that this is a GitHub URL so this is the URL you need so you need to just copy it actually and just you can have the reference of this or else you can even have a spring pit clinic like you can just say spring pit clinic GitHub okay. yeah it's already showing so click on here this is a GitHub spring pit clinic project click here it will take you directly to the project and you could see that you can clone the code. So how to clone the code? Click on here and you will see that you are having HTTP or HTTP uh, GitHub CLI. Always go with HTTP, copy this and you can just use even this also. Any project, any open source project, you can make use of it guys. Or else we ourselves, we can write our own application, Java and you can play around it, right? So we need a Git URL, okay, fine. So while cloning, what you need? First, you need a Git URL. Second, you need a credential. What credential you need? You need uh, the credential like username or the password or the GitHub, right? GitHub username and password or SSH keys required. What are the other things you needed? You needed something like a branch information. <clears throat> okay, branch. So these are the main important things which we need while cloning the code from the Git actually. So we would be take you would be doing a lot of examples now, how to clone it everything. Like for example, so let's consider that uh, the how I can say I can use some to the following uh, two Java open source applications. What are those? First, I will take a Spring Pit Clinic. Spring Pit Clinic. Okay. So what do you need it for the Spring Pit Clinic? So basically, Spring Pit Clinic, basically, guys, this is a developed in Java actually. This the whole source code is developed in Java language. Okay, and always it requires the Java 11 to be installed in your machine. It means that already Java should be present in your 
mission actually right so i can say open jdk open jdk 11 to be there right open jdk 11 should be installed that's a prerequisite for your spring fit clinic right and after that what you need you need something like a repo, repo url repo url or nothing but this is a, so this is a url so just copy this and this is what the repo url you need this is a spring fit clinic repo url okay what else so now let's clone the project actually let's clone the project this is what i needed guys okay so let me do one thing let me go to my uh, let me go to my aws console oh i already logged in i think okay i'll just go to the ec2 instance it's already there go to the instances let me check what are the servers i have guys so I have some servers are there. Okay, no problem. I'll try to start all these servers, start all the instance. So this is a Jenkins servers. So I've already installed it and you you know that it is there in, I have chosen the t2.medium because you need um, some little high configuration for your Jenkins server. Even though like t2.medium is also very small, but still what happened, right? You need a minimum of t2.medium. Right, so let it come up, guys. Let it come up. So I think it has come up. Okay, let's wait. Okay. Okay, it has come up, guys. So let me log into this Jenkins server. Okay, first let me log in it. So this is IP address. Copy the IP address. Go to your download directory where I have putty.exe. Launch the putty.exe. Copy this IP address. Go to the bell just do a none go to the appearance change it change it to 14 make it as a bold okay the color settings make it as a default change this connection to give the keep up, up uh, keep alive for 30 and go to the ssh and here go to the auth credentials browse the private key for authentication click on this my key new key dot ppk open it and then say open it so you are able you are trying to Login into your Jenkins server. See Ubuntu. So by default, I have logged into the Ubuntu, and you know that uh, you can even set sudo service or sudo system CTL status Jenkins. So you know that this service should always be up and running, right? So Jenkins is up and running. Fine, good. What else you need? You have something known as a Jenkins user account, which is already created. See, if I do a switch to the so if and Jenkins, see, you already switched to Jenkins. It means that Jenkins is already installed and we have this user account, right? And if you execute PWD, you could see that you are into this home directory. This is a home directory for your Jenkins user. This and all we had covered in the last session. And all these are configuration files. And important what we discussed in the last session is work direct workspace as well as jobs. These are the two important directory which we had covered in the last session. So I'm not discussing those things again now, okay? But I'm just saying that, okay? So let me do the thing. Let me exit out. Okay, fine. Right now, Jenkins is running. Fine. I have logged into the server also. That's okay. Now, what I will do? I'll just click on it, and you know that Jenkins will always be running onto the port number eighty eighty. So copy this IP. Go to your browser. Uh, do an HTTP, and give the IP, and just do a colon eighty eighty, port number eighty eighty. So this is your uh, login page. So last time I remember I had created a user account by name Rajesh. And I have given the password and I just log in. So once I log in, you could see that I have logged into my Jenkins. Is it fine, guys? Still here? Are they okay? Fine, guys. I think I hope you you all know this still here, right? Okay. <clears throat> now coming back here. So now what we are doing now as part of the experiment now, we are doing a cloning of the project. Okay. So for cloning of the projects, I'll go to the git. Sorry, I'll go to the Jenkins and here you could see that there's a new item. So whenever you want to create any job or you have to create any project, you have to always click on new, new item. So click on the new item and here you do something like a git clone, cloning demo one, something and give the freestyle project. So right now we will be learning a freestyle project. Come down and then say, okay. So what we will be doing guys as of now, <coughs> okay this is used to clone the spring 
clinic project so this is for this is to clone the spring clinic right now what i will do as as part of execution i will go to the directly to the build step here or else you scroll down i am not really interested in other other stuff and all the other various menus i will directly go to the build step here under the build step guys you could see that you have something like execute shell so i will just try to call this execute shell right here what i will do that i will directly use the command i know the command git clone give the spring pet clinic code so i will just copy this and i will paste it here once you are git you are cloning right you know that actually guys you will get a directory so what is the directory will get we we'll get the directory once you clone it you will get this directory spring pet clinic so you copy this and you you are doing cd onto it and after that what happened right you will be running the git branch so you have to see that on which branch you are working as well as you want to do ls hyphen al dot so these are some tasks which you are doing it means that here in the execute shell itself we are cloning it and you are doing into the you are getting inside the spring pet clinic directory you are doing a git branch and you are doing this so let's see whether the job will run or run or not actually so apply and then save it actually <coughs> so you have created a job guys now if you want to re uh, recheck again you can again go clicking the co configure button you go again you can get inside the job and you can just verify yourself that yeah what you have did it or what you have mentioned okay git clone given the git url so this is the spring pit clinic git url okay this is what you are doing for the thing okay fine i got it now come back here and to execute it you know that always you have to run a build now so you are running this job means you have to execute this job means you have to just say build now so when you are executing the build now you could see that actually already the job has executed guys and if you click on this it will directly take you to the console output so now here you could see that actually that it has cloned that project and you could see that it has got into the directory and it has git a git branch and as part of execution of git branch it's showing that it's a main branch so you are in main branch okay when i do an lsfnl this is the source code of your spring pet cleaning see this is the source code of this the whole source code so i did a ls hyphen al dot see the whole thing okay so it means that you have executed everything with one of the if you have cloned the spring pet cleaning guys and you have executed the job correct now you know that when you have executed this git cloning in the mist in the system or in this machine where it has cloned guys it has cloned in the workspace if you go to the cd to the workspace cd sorry i think uh, i should switch to the jenkins so after switching to the jenkins you know that there's a workspace cd to the workspace enter ls and you could see that there is a project with this name git cloning demo 1 see here you are having something as a git cloning demo 1 this is the project name you could see the git cloning demo 1 so git cloning demo 1 is there under that if you do an ls you could see that you have this directory under that you have the whole source code of your spring pet clinic so it means that always guys whenever you are cloning any project right from any of the git always the cloned code will always <coughs> be there in the workspace directory this is one of the intro question where it get cloned or where those files are getting created or where that source code will get downloaded or where when you clone the whole project in your jenkins server where it gets stored it gets stored into your workspace so workspace means where it is it is under slash where lib jenkins workspace and it will create the whatever the project name you are given guys with the same name it will create one directory under that it will create a spring pet cleaning under that you will find all the code this is what you have to tell actually right so i'll do a pwd ls l ls l pwd ls l this is what you will be having so this is a simple project which we clone that is not but spring pet cleaning project we <coughs> so now what we'll do guys let's clone one more project guys can we clone one more projects okay now what we'll do that let's clone now the second one what is it this is the first one second one let's clone the open mrs open mrs word open medical record system this is also written in java this is also developed in java this is also developed in java so we are just trying to clone now we are not we are not doing any build activity guys only we are cloning the code and we are just seeing whether cloning is working or not right java so this is a 
ओपन मेडिकल रिकॉर्ड सिस्टम प्रोजेक्ट तो व्हाट इज द रेपो यू आर एल रेपो यू आर एल नथिंग बट द गिट यू आर एल द गिट यू आर एल गाइस यू गो टू द नेट एंड यू जस्ट से ओपन एम आर एस गिट हब यू विल गेट दिस गिट गिट हब लिंक सी गो टू द ओपन एम आर एस क्लिक ऑन हियर so there are many projects are there you will go with the mrs core actually mr open mrs core hyphen core go to the core and this is nothing but your git url so copy this git url this is your but your repo url so you have already copied it see this is open mrs url right after that what is it guys let's clone now okay what we will do we will go to the jenkins job again and i will go to the dashboard click on to the new item okay git clone open mrs this is the project name i mean git clone open mrs you will go to the freestyle you go to the freestyle now you come down here and you can just say okay okay this is to this is to clone the open mrs project now what i can do guys i can go directly here the same stuff i can go to the build uh, under the build step i can go to the add the build step i can go to the execute shell and here i can do the same stuff git clone and give the whole url like this whatever you have but i don't want to do that actually i don't want to execute through the shell now what is the other way we have to do you could know that there is something like source code management if you click on the source code management you could see that you will come here you have something like git actually so already the in the in 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 case of a in case of a jenkins ui it is providing you something i you know as a ui actually user interface where with the help of a user interface also you can do the same activity what you are doing through command actually right so when you click on this git actually you could see that it is asking for the git url it is asking for the credential it is asking for you which is the branch everything now here if you see here guys for the open mrs what is the branch <coughs> default branch default branch is the master branch okay what about our uh, spring pet clinic see the default branch is a main branch here it is not master it is a main branch whereas here in open mrs it is a master branch so always whenever you are cloning you should know that you are on which branch you are cloning so this is a branch i am cloning guys so you should know even remember or you should even know the branch name also you should know it okay fine so i know that and since uh, this is an this is an open project this is an open source project let it be a spring pet clinic or open mrs or game of life or odo or nop commerce any project which i have mentioned right here all these are open source project all these are open source project means that you doesn't need any credential while cloning or while downloading it you need not to have any credential without credential directly you can download it or directly you can clone through the git command right so what i am doing here guys i will try to copy this open mrs git url or git repo i'll copy it and then i'll go to the job here what it says that git url just paste this git url fine what about the credential do you need any credential no i don't need any none i don't need any credential if you need it then you have to add it so right now because it's an open source and it is in a it is in a public repository you need not to provide any credential okay fine now you could see that okay what branch you're working on which branch this you are cloning it the branch is a master branch here also you could see that it is a master branch oh nothing so that's all guys you need not to do anything so it means that with the help of here in the source code management here itself you have provided all the details what you have to clone it actually that's all guys just uh, you need not to do anything just say apply and save <coughs> okay now you could see that you have you are cloning the open mrs actually git clone open mrs project now once you have finished it you have to just run a build now just click on the build now see whether it will clone it or not see so it is running click on here and you could see that see it is fetching it yeah it is cloning it yeah it's cloning and finally it will the job will get succeeded see the job will get succeeded means that it has cloned the whole project so where it has cloned guys see under the workspace where is the workspace slash var lib jenkins workspace under that it has created a directory with the same project name git clone open mrs under here it has cloned guys so if you go to this server see here come out from the open come out from here come out from here come out from here see under the open workspace can you see that one more directory has created git 
clone open MRS see under that you could see that all the source code of your open MRS has been cloned or has been copied am I clear on this sir till here do you have any doubts here let me know guys <coughs> okay so all clear sir all clear okay so now what happened guys okay now what i'll do let's clone so let's clone the dot net project now the third one is that let's clone the dot net open source project okay so the open source project uh, guys there is a project by name open source by name nop commerce actually it's a open source project actually okay right nops project and if you go to the internet and if you just say nop commerce github see it is showing you see this is nothing but your open source e-commerce solution this is a dot net this is a this is entire code is written in the dot net application right now you could see that here what happened now guys you could see that actually the branch name is a developed branch name project and this is nothing but your git url so copy it this git url so what you'll do you go to the job here again go to the dashboard okay now let's clone one more project so i'll go to the new item okay git clone what is it nop commerce or nop project anything git clone nop commerce right or i'll just say nop commerce yeah this is better actually simple nop commerce go click on the freestyle say open so now you know that oh i need not to go and type the command actually basically you can go to directly to the source code management and you can click on this git ui and you'll get a ui it is asking for the git repository url for your nop so you can go here you can copy this and here come over here and paste it actually okay. and you know that the default branch is a developed branch so that's the reason same thing here no credentials are nothing none is there it means it's a it's a it's a public repository you need not to provide any credential at all come over here and here instead of master you have to give develop right correct right develop right yeah develop only so the same thing rest other things need not to that's all so just save and apply yeah so apply and save it's a save now now you have to just run a build now so it will just you could see that the job will just trigger now and you could see the see it's trigger now just click on this it will go to the console output see it is cloning the project so here this is the basic step of how to clone a project from the github to your jenkins actually right so either you can use in a command line like how we did it earlier in the first job right or else you have to use the git ui because this git ui how we are getting this git ui guys how we are getting this git ui because while installation itself what happened right right the git plugin got installed actually that's why see it has already cloned it and it has it has cloned it so how you confirm you could see here actually in the workspace it has created a directory by name nops commerce under that the whole code has been cloned see come out from here and you could see that it has here nop commerce see nop commerce and do an lsfnl see all the code of your nop commerce has been cloned. okay now guys what is your exercise for you guys today the exercise for you is that for you is that clone write the or configure jenkins job jenkins job to clone uh, odo project this is the exercise for you today i'll give some more exercise so what you will do i will not be showing but you can do it you can just go to the net and just <coughs> say odo github Odo open source to grow your business. So click on this. Now you could see that you know that you know the trick now. You have to copy this, clone it, and while cloning it, you have to give the branch name. So what is the branch you will be giving here? 16.0 as a branch name you will give. And this the whole code will get cloned actually. Is it clear? Okay. Good. That's what you have to do today. So, guys, just we learned about how to clone the project. Okay. Now, as per the diagram, guys, once you clone the project, actually, 
you know that once you clone the project, basically you need to provide that code, the whole source code to the build server. Because finally what happened, right? Out of the code, right? You have to build the package or you need to create a binary. So you cannot just directly take a code and run it, right? Or you cannot take a directly the whole code, whatever is there, you can place in a production server. You cannot do like that, right? Because the code will never, your the application will never uh, get executed uh, in, with, with the code actually. So it has to be converted to the binaries or it has to be created as a package. Then only the code or the application will get executed by the operating system or the or the machine actually we say, right? Or, or by the server. So you have to give that code to the build server. So it depends upon the application, what application you use, right? You will be using a particular build server. Like if the application is Java, then you have to use a Maven build code. If you have the application is .NET, you have to use MS build code like that. If the if the project is, which you have written is a C or C plus, then you will be using the make file build, make file right like that. It depends upon the uh, application which you have chosen for uh, sorry the language which you have chosen for writing your application. Am I clear on this, sir? Okay. So what would be our next agenda? The next agenda is that actually we need to learn about what is this maven tool and how this maven tool works but today what i'll be doing right i will not be going directly to understand that how exactly is maven works on the day one onwards first onwards i need not to tell you everything about the what is maven tool or what is the build tool and all what we'll understand is that today we'll try to understand what exactly the packaging or what exactly the build process is why we call it the build process or what do we, what is the meaning of the build process that we will try to understand today okay so guys, so what is our topic now? The main important topic is that but build or packaging the code actually. You need to build or package the code actually, right? So, <coughs> so guys, now, so guys, watch or uh, watch and listen carefully whatever I'm saying from now, right? It is very important. Now, guys. Whenever you develop any code, whenever you develop, whenever a developer is developing any code, suppose that he has chosen a Java language to develop the code. So what happened at the Java language, right? A DevOps engineer, he did not to know how exactly the code has been written, right? He did not to understand everything. But only one, but what the DevOps engineer has to understand is that actually he need to understand like how exactly the build server works or not, but the particular build tool will work. That's what he need to understand. It means that basically he's more interested in, uh, you know, in building this application, right? So to build the application, guys, you need to know, you need to understand the build server or the build tool and whatever the commands which are related to the build tool and what are the configuration files which are related to that particular build tool. Only those things are only required for the DevOps engineer to learn. DevOps engineer need not to learn the whole coding. Do you think that the DevOps engineer will try to ask developer, please open the code and try to explain me what you have written? No, right? Because it is not his job. DevOps, jo uh, DevOps person job is to just uh, create a package or create a build package or create a binary out of from the source code, right? So what we'll be learning now, guys, we'll be learning like, what do you mean by packaging? So what we'll be learning, we'll be learning or we'll be understanding about what is a packaging. P-A-C-K-A-G-I-N-G, right? What do you mean by packaging? So guys, see, whenever they basically in the programming world, there are two technologies, guys. There are two technologies. What happened, right? You can directly run any application directly from the code itself. Like for example, right? You can run the code or you can run the <coughs> application run from the code itself. Okay. And you can run the application from the binary. These are the two types of technology we have, guys. So what is it? You can directly run the code, the application directly from the code itself, or else you can run the code, or you can run not code, sorry, you can run the application, run the application from binaries. Right? Now, what are the examples which falls under this technology? So there are technologies like, for example, you have written a <coughs> code. <coughs> Suppose you have written an application by using the Python, okay, by using a PHP or by using a Node.js. See, 
Suppose you have written an application with the help of a Python, or you have written an application using the PHP programming, right? I think I have to write here somewhere. Yeah. Or else, if you have chosen the application right in a Node.js, actually. So, guys, this technology, if you are written a code by using these languages, right, you need not to compile any code. You can directly run your application directly from the code itself, actually. Am I clear? Right? So, packaging, there are two methods. You can run the code directly from the code, or else you need to run the application from the binary. Okay, so now what happened, right? Running the application from the binary, it means that, for example, you have many languages, like, for example, you have languages like uh, Java, you have a languages like .NET, you have a languages like C or C++ or C hash, right? So what happened, right, guys? You have, suppose you have written an application using Java, okay? You have written an application using your uh, .NET or else you have used something like C or C++. Right? You have written the application with these languages. So what are the applications you have chosen to use? Python or .NET or C++, right? Then what happened, right? You need to create a build out of it. You need to create a binary out of this language. It means that once you have written the code, you cannot directly run the code from the, for, you cannot run the application directly from the code. See here, whereas here, if you return the application using the Python PHP node, you can directly run the uh, your program. You do not have to compile it, everything. So that is the technology which you're using. Directly run your uh, application through the code itself. But here, guys, if you're choosing the Java, .NET, or C++, or many other languages are there, right? Then you cannot directly run the code. You need to basically create a binary, or you need to create a build, or you need to create a package, we say. So what are the package technology which we create in your Java. So for Java guys, you can create, uh, basically there are three uh, formats are there. One is nothing but your jar and var and er5. These are the technologies or these are the formats we use it. So from the Java code, you can either build the jar file or either you can build the var file, vr var, or either you can build the er. So through any of this format, guys, any of this, you can create the format in either jar or var or er. Am I clear, sir? So you need to create it like this, right? Now, so it means that, so jar is Java archive, var means web archive. Suppose like you say that, uh, Rajesh, you want to run the application in some Tomcat application or your JB, uh, Apache Tomcat server. So then what happened, guys, you will build the application with the with the, with this extension var actually so that you need to run your java application in your in some kind of a web server so then you need a var actually similarly we have a jar we have er actually so these are basically three uh you know like binary, binary formats which you will get from after compiling the java program java code similarly what happened right for the dot net you know very well that you can either create the dll so you need to create a DNA, dynamic link libraries we say dll or else you can even create your um what do you call exe dot exe correct you can either create a dot executable you can create so through the dot net you after compiling the dot net right code you will either get the dlr or exe you can run the code with the dll or exe similarly what happened right you have a c c plus plus guys so for the c or c plus plus guys you can i uh, you can create a format. Uh, we say something like an ELF format, we say. So from the C or C++, you need to generate the ELF format, executable linking format, or else you could see that we create a format, something like A.out, assembler output, right, right? So after compiling the C or C++ code, you will get this format. You will get this execution format or binary format, like this you'll get. <coughs> Clear, guys? So basically, the whole you could see that the whole package is divided into two different things, right? Run from the code or run from the application from the binary, right? And for this, we doesn't need any kind of a compiling. Directly, you can run the application from the code itself. Here, you cannot done, run directly because you need to convert into binary. So what happened, right? So this, so this uh, for running the application from the binary is what you need, guys. 
you need a this requires a build step so what you have to do that this requires a build step actually so this requires the build step do you agree with me guys this requires the build step which one application if you run the application from the binaries right it reads it requires a build step actually it requires a build step you need to build it actually so what do you mean by building what do my building means building is nothing but you are actually converting the code into the binary so what are doing that you are actually converting the code into the binaries like this you have to say converting the code into binaries do you agree with me guys correct so guys do you agree with me till here are you okay amit gorov yes sir got it is it clear yes sir you? good okay good so now guys now what happened right see i will tell you one thing see what happened no there are many languages are there like java is there dot net is there c++ is there. there are many high level languages are there what a bullet always these languages right all these languages most of the languages most of the languages most of the software uh, languages like java or dot net or anything c c++ anything right it always it always it always requires the dependency dependency what do mean dependency means see suppose for example you have heard about you know the spring right have you heard about spring spring framework have you heard about the spring framework spring framework so this is the same framework right see what happened right whenever you want to make use of your spring uh, within your java code within a java code right you need to use all the spring framework actually so spring framework it uh, is a dependency so spring framework is a dependency is a dependency it means that it is a dependency means it is a library dependency means it means that it is a library or we can even call it as a repository or we can call it as a repository means guys whenever you are writing any uh, application right there is a lot of dependencies are there on many of the libraries many of the framework so what happened right you need to download all those frameworks suppose i am writing a java uh, uh, web service application or java spring boot application or something right the java program right it needs the spring boot dependency so what you need to do as a developer what he will do right he will try to download all the dependency first download all the dependency he will try to download it and then he will make use of those dependency in his application and he will make use of it in he will make use he will make use of those dependencies while writing the code while writing the application or while writing the code all right guys so this dependency guys what we call we call this as a libraries or even we can call it as a repositories actually you many languages not it's not like that any language you see guys it has a dependencies actually okay now for example i'm just giving an example suppose like suppose for example suppose for example you are writing a java program java program and uh, you need to uh, send uh, some sms messages from your java program so do you think guys the developer will sit and write the java uh, sms uh, uh, code so that he can use he need not to write any code for sending an sms what he will do no he knows that already there is an existing library is there which can send an sms why I, why why don't i use that the, those libraries in my code right so what he will do the java developer will do he will go to the google and he will say just send sms java 
जस्ट यू विल डू लाइक दैट एंड एस एम एस जावा तो कम डाउन यू नो दैट सी दर इज वन फेमस टूल इज फेमस साइट इज देर टिवलियो डॉट कॉम एक्चुअली तो ओपन दिस तो कम डाउन सी गई सी सम पर्सन बन एंड टीवी ही हेज रिटर्न अ लाइब्रेरी सी वेन यू आर राइटिंग when you are writing your application java application and through your application you want to send any sms right you can import those libraries within your code after importing library see here he is actually using this message format and he is using this message dot creator and is sending the messages and is creating and sending the messages this is how guys he will be using this library directly or he will be using this dependency directly so it means that you need not to rewrite the code again you have to only reuse the existing library or the code already existing so that's what you could see that lot of developers right they will not reinvent the code again they will be using some code which is written by some other person and all these codes whatever the dependency code is there this we call it as a library or we call it as a repo or we call it as a uh, dependency so we can use any kind of a technology either library or dependency or repository so in the java technology or in this technology right we always term it as a repository so from now i always say the repository the repository is another but it is an external libraries which any kind of a language requires for it to for it uh, uh, like for for the completion of the project right, they will be using lot of things right like same thing like for example so this is the code so this is the site guys actually where you will be using some libraries for implementing the sending sms through your java code similarly can i can i have a suppose if i'm writing any uh, suppose i'm writing any uh, application through python and i need to send an sms so can i uh, can I, do you have to write the whole code of sending sms in in python or else i have to use some other library or somebody has written yeah better to use some other person who has written already right why you have to reinvent it again so what happened send sms python see just type like this that's all guys no other thing see plio plio.com somebody has already written it so you need not to understand the coding i'm just telling you see if you come down see mm, where is it guys <clears throat> uh not this okay come down here send sms java uh send sms uh, send sms python correct no i am searching for the twlio only where is the t t w l o uh, uh here this is what it is yeah. it is already there open this see same thing guys he is importing the os and he is using this library to your library so in his python right he can employ he can make use of this whole function to send an sms see it has become so easy so when you are writing a python right you can aram se use all these libraries right dependencies with you right so that's what what happened right you are heavily depend upon the developers are depend upon lot of libraries like that like that there are many libraries are there so you have lot of uh, external repository sites are there or you call it the Uh, central repositories are there where the java developer will try to download all the dependencies from that central repositories actually okay so now guys what happened right so now what happened right see what happened here according to the diagram here so now you have pushed the code sorry you have you have cloned the code from the github right or from the git url now you are trying to build the package so for building the package you need to first understand what technology the developer has used to develop the code so suppose um that he has used a java technology okay fine so i need some kind of a build server to build it actually so it means that we have a code but the code has some kind of a dependency so what happened right so so there is a code actually this source code which is written in java so this we call as a code and guys this code has some kind of a dependency it has some kind of a dependency dependencies right dependencies actually sir dependencies right it has some kind of a dependencies actually and what is this dependencies guys this dependencies is nothing but it is a it is something like a reusable re library that's what i'm trying to tell 
it is a reusable library is reusable library is hey guys this and all we need to understand this is very good if you understand all the things in a very basic way right if you understand it is very good so under the reusable libraries basically what happened right there are a lot of re reusable libraries are there which are open source right which are open source you know that there are a lot of people who have written the open source libraries so like now i just uh, try to show you right how to send an sms through the java or how to send an sms through the python so i am depending upon this library so these are all open source libraries these are freely available it's an open source library right but in companies right what happened right? usually what happened right uh, you know like when they are developing any project some customized project or critical project which they are developing right they might not depend upon this open source library so what they will do right they will literally develop the library so what the developers will do they will actually develop their own libraries so what we call as a, what the company does they will do a internally they will develop the libraries internally the developer will develop the libraries libraries dependency libraries or repositories we said right so dependency right like this correct guys so guys to manage this dependencies so you need to manage this dependency guys so to manage this dependency what happened right you need lot of tools is required so to manage this dependencies you need a so for the management of all this dependency guys you have lot of tools are available for the management of dependency you have lot of tools so each and every uh, dependency right basically what we say right we have a something known as a metadata actually you need not to understand everything now itself i'm just telling you for managing everything for each and every tool right you have something as a metadata metadata means what it, it is nothing but it is a name and the version of that metadata we will be using the name or the version so what is it right now you need not to break your head i will tell you later about this okay so you have a metadata and internal metadata is numbered it is a name and the version of that metadata and here guys to make sure that actually that uh, you need to manage the whole dependency so each and every tool it has its own intern built in tool will be available for example like i will tell you like for managing this for example i will tell you now like for example uh, we have lot of tools are available lot of tools are available right what are those tools i'll tell you now so we have lot of tools available like for example <clears throat> how i can say like for example for your python suppose you are having a python code suppose you are having a python language python language right for the python right because python needs many of the dependent library you can install all those dependent library using the pip tool using a pip tool so pip is a tool actually we say pip is a tool so pip is a tool which used to download all kind of a dependencies for the python coding for the python whenever you want to install any kind of a uh, python uh, library which you need it in your application right then you have to install the pip through the pip you can install the dependencies everything right similarly guys what you have something known as a you have uh, what you have you have something known as a javascript or the node you know right node js and all right you know that there is a node js or javascripting right you know javascript is there or we call it as a node js right or just a node for that guys you need a, you have some internal tools we are having those tools are there are two tools basically one is a uh, what is the tool uh, i forgotten mm, uh, yeah npm tool and one more is a yarn tool y a r n these are all the dependence tools actually whenever you are develop you are when you whenever any developer is working on node js right he is writing an application using the node js right he will be depending upon the npm or yarn to deploy all or install the all the dependency application right similarly you have something known as a java language okay i am writing my application to java to the java language so you might need lot of dependency so is there any tool which can download all dependencies and all 
for my Java, please. Yes, there are so many tools are there. Out of which, which are the famous tools? Ah, uh, we have something like the Maven. Maven is a build tool as well as it can even download all the repositories. Maven is there. Oh, Gradle is there. Oh, beautiful. So these are the tools, guys, which are which are nothing but which are used for downloading all the dependencies for your Java program. Like this. Similarly, guys, you have something as a .NET application. Suppose you are writing any application using a .NET, right? The .NET application, the .NET language. So for the .NET, what happened, right? You have an internal tool. We have a tool known as a NuGet, actually. NuGet, we say. We call it a NuGet. N-U-G-E-T. N-U-G-E-T. So NuGet is a tool, internal tool, which is used by your .NET to download any kind of a dependencies it needs. Like this. Am I clear on this until here? So guys, what happened, right? Now, if you see the series, right? If you see it, actually, you need to pay first clone the code. And after cloning the code, right? Basically, you need to provide to the build server. Within the build server, based on the application, you'll be having a build server. If my application is Java, then you'll have a Maven or Gradle. Specifically, Maven is a build tool we have. It also manages the dependencies also. Earlier, before uh, Maven, right? We had an ant, actually. Tomorrow, I'll discuss about those things and all. Ant tool and all. So before uh, Maven, Ant was there. So Ant and Maven basically both are from the uh, Apache software actually. Apache Software Foundation, right? You have Apache Software Foundation where both these projects were developed actually, right? So under the Apache Foundation, right? The first tool which was uh, developed was Ant tool actually. But Ant has a lot of limitations. That's the reason the same community, Apache Foundation, right? They came up with the Maven tool. So Maven is used for building any kind of a Java code. But what is the speciality of the Maven that it also maintains the dependencies. So whenever you are Java code, it requires a lot of dependency. The Maven tool can download all kind of a dependencies, whatever it needed, either from the remote repository or either from the centralized repository anywhere. What is this remote repository? What is the centralized repository? I will tell you next classes. Don't worry. Right. So similarly, when you are developing any .NET application, right, to build the application, you need an MS build actually. MS build tool is required, but MS build tool, right? What it builds it, but internally, what happened, right? It will be using the NuGet to download any kind of a dependency what is needed. So NuGet is a tool which you have to install it, guys. So till here, are you clear, guys? So what I will do now, I will show you a small examples of how to install the dependencies, either through your, suppose you've written any Python code and you need to install some dependencies. How to do that? Oh, I need a pip actually. Okay, fine. So how to do that? So let me do one thing, guys. Let me go to my uh, console, AWS console. Okay, there are some servers. Let me do one thing, guys. Let me launch a new server. I don't want to really get into this servers actually. Let me launch a new server. So I will just say uh, my Linux server, anything. It's a, a dummy server I need actually. I need one small server. So my Linux server, I will choose the Ubuntu Linux. I'll go with the 20.04 and come down here. <clears throat> I'll choose the t2.micro, that is sufficient. I'll go with the the key pair is my key, new key. Here I'll select the existing security group. I'll scroll here and I'll select this, my new SG. Come down here, nothing else, just say launch. So you have launched a new Ubuntu server down so it is coming up let's wait so i want to just to show you guys like how exactly uh, with this internal tool right you can actually uh, you know like uh, install the dependencies see guys you need not to know all these things right only some few basic thing is required because that ultimately tomorrow you will when you are working on jenkins mostly you will be involved in writing the pipelining you will be uh, like managing the whole jenkins servers there are a lot of things are there you need not to know all these things like how exactly internal tool works how exactly the Maven works, you need not to know. But before, but at least some basic knowledge is required for each and every tool. Because tomorrow what happens if some some kind of issue comes where the build is failing and all, right? If, if you know many of the basic stuff, right, you can able to easily uh, analyze like why that build is failing actually, right? And you can give an appropriate information to the develop, uh, developers also that this is what it is failing. So according to me, this could be the issue. Like that you can share some information with him so that he will also get to know that like, so it is always that if you have some extra information, right, you will be able to analyze in a better way. That's all. So here, this server has come up, right? I will click on this. 
and I will just uh, copy the public IP, go to my download directory, open the putty session, copy this, same stuff guys, then appearance, change, go to the 12 or 14, uh, go to the color, settings, connection, I'll make it as a 30, fine, go to the SSH, go to the auth, click on the credential, click on this private key, click on this PPK file, and then say open. So log in as a Ubuntu user. Okay. I logged in as a Ubuntu user. Okay. So now guys, let me check whether the Python is there or not. I'll just say Python hyphen hyphen version, or just a hyphen V. So Python is not installed. So I can install the Python 3 or Python, right? Python 3. So what I will do that, I will not go with the Python 3. I will go with the Python 2 actually. So how to install Python 2 uh, in Ubuntu? So I can go with any site actually. Let me check this linuxint.com. <coughs> so what is giving the step guys? So sudo app install Python 2 is giving. So this step is giving before that anything else. Okay, sudo opt update. Okay, I will do that. After that, he is doing a sudo opt up. app install Python 2. Find sudo app. So Python 2 hyphen V. This is the way to verify it. Okay, fine. To install the Python V, you have to install Python. Okay. So what I will do here, I'll do a sudo app update. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now I'll just say sudo app uh, install. Is it guys? Python 2 hyphen y. So this is a command I'm using to install the Python. Okay. So after installing, if I do a Python 2 hyphen v, so Python is installed. See, Python is installed actually. And just a control D. Okay. Now, I need to install the pip actually. So you can install sudo app install. Pip is a build tool, right? It is a tool actually. It's a tool which you use to uh, install any kind of a dependencies for your Python. So I will try to install the pip tool actually. Sudo app install pip y. So it is installing. So, okay. Okay, pip is installed. So what I'll do guys, uh, let me create one something like uh, MKDR Python demo, something Python demo. So CD to the Python demo. So what I need, right? Suppose for example, you know, like, uh, you know, like whenever you want to develop any application in Python, uh, you know that there is something known as a Django. As you know that, right? This is a Django web framework. It is used to develop any kind of a web application. So whenever you are developing a web application through the Java, you sorry, through the Python, you have to use the Django framework actually. So you need this dependency in your Python. So you say that Rajesh, I want to install this dependency. How will you install the dependency? See, you have written the code. I have not yet written any code here, but now I want to install the Django uh, like dependency. So what you will do guys, you will try to install with the help of a pip, install Django, see, like this. So what the pip will do, pip will try to install all the Django web framework, frame, framework. Can you see guys, now it is started downloading and it is installing, see, downloading the Django, see, it is installing the Django, it is installing something as a backboard, we don't know what is it, it is installing the SQL parse, see, like that many of your package has been installed, so pip is a tool actually, which in turn used by the Python, which, which is a part of the Python, so by using a pip actually you can install all kind of a Python dependency libraries you can install, or Python repositories you can install through the pip command. So this is the way where you're trying to install the pip, but sorry, where you're trying to install the Django framework. So when I do an LS, so nothing is there. So what you can do guys, you can just run a uh, pip 
freeze greater than requirement dot txt see guys for the pip see it needs all this dependency packages it needs actually right and with the version okay it needs a jinja 2 with this version it needs a idn with this see you could see that it require it is showing you all kind of a dependencies whatever you need it actually similarly suppose like for example one more example i will take like for example suppose you are developing a javascript so i'll just say mkdr java script demo so guys nowadays you know that for the uh, suppose you are building a uh, react application suppose this is so by using a pip actually what you did right you install the django framework right? this is what i did actually now what happened guys uh, through i am developing a javascript actually so nowadays you are you know that we most of the people right developers they are using the react uh, javascript right react js they are using actually Right, they're using the React JS. For the React JS, basically, right, you need a Node JS to be installed. Actually, so let me check whether I have a Node JS here in my system. So I'll just say Node hyphen V. So it is not there. So it is saying that Node JS install Node JS, but I don't want to install like this way. What I'll go, I'll go to the net and I'll say just uh, installing Node JS on Ubuntu 20. So whatever. So basically, I will go with some site actually. So I'll go with this install Node JS on Ubuntu, come over here. He is clearly explaining that how I can install the Node.js guys. So he said that for the Node.js, you have to say sudo uh, app install Node.js npm, okay? And when you're installing, when after installation, right? He's saying that when you're executing a Node.js hyphen V, it is showing that this is the output it is showing. It means that once you've installed the Node.js, you will get this version. Okay, fine. But is there any other way where I can install? Yeah, I can install through this way also. So better I'll do one thing, I'll go with installing a from this method, not with the app method, app install, not with this method. I don't want to go with this method, guys. I want to, don't want to go with this method. I will go with this method now. Why? I will tell you later. Why I'm doing like, I will tell you later. So I'll just try to copy this complete link, right? And then like paste it. So, okay. Okay, fine. After that, what I'm doing here, right? I'm just doing a sudo app install node.js. After this step, I'm installing the sudo app install. <clears throat> so, once it is installed, the node is installed. What do you do? We will verify whether the node js node js installed or not with the help of a node command. So I'll just say node hyphen v. Can you see that? Okay, version eighteen dot twelve dot one has been installed. Fine. Now, what you have to do means basically, guys, you need to uh, you need to develop uh, an application which is not but the React based application, React node, React JavaScript based application you are installing. So for that, what I will do, right? I need to use a command npx actually. Npx is also a part of the Node.js. When you install the Node.js, right? Npx will also come to the picture, right? So when I do Node MJS, so first let me check whether the npx is there or not. Should be there yeah it is there already so it is there already npx is there actually so what i will do guys first lot up and right i need to create i'll have to use a npx create what is it a react hyphen app let's say something with some name my app something npx create a react hyphen app my app so what it says that it says that need to install the following package. Okay, create app. Yeah, I'll say yes. I'll say enter, install. Yeah, it's trying to download and it is saying, guys, creating. Okay, it is saying it's deprecated. Fine. But still, what happened? It is installing actually. So, what happened, right? It is actually creating this React app app. It is installing it and it is creating my app actually. So it will take time, guys. So it is downloading all kind of dependency now. This is just an example, guys, to just to show you how the dependencies are getting installed, right? So you could see that for the for your uh, what happened for your JavaScript or Node, 
or Node.js, you use either NPM or Yarn. You can even install through NPM also here. I can install through NPM. I can just say NPM install create create hyphen React app. I can I would have I should have installed first this app, this dependency, and then I should have created. See, getting initialized. See, installing the template. So installing the dependency. See, using NPM. Internet is using NPM. NPX is using NPM. See, it is using. See, it is installing all kind of a thing. See, so many libraries in the back end. It is getting installed. Guys. See, it is getting installed now. It is getting installed. See, it has already installed it actually. Or either you can install uh, this this one, right? React, create a React app, right? You can install through npm. See, like this npm install React, create hyphen React hyphen app. Like this, you would have installed it. So, this is already installed actually. See, this is already installed. You need not, it's already installed it actually. So, now what happened, right? I created the React project by help of a command npx create. React app space my app. And when you do an LS, can you see there's a file by name my iPhone app is created? So many other dependencies are also created, as well as you could see that there's a file by name packet.json is created. If you open the packet.json file, see guys, so it has created, see, it needs the dependency. What the, it needs a dependency? It needs to create an iPhone, uh, create iPhone React app dependency, and the version should be 5.0.1. So this is a dependency it requires for your my app for this for creating a React for the React uh, application the my app right it needs the dependency what is the dependency it needs this dependency automatically the dependency is installed it you need to install it now what happened guys so it has created it and you could see that actually there's a my app so my app is there my app you get, can get inside the app now what it says inside that so you can get into this my app. And you can just start the application, npm start. So you're just starting that application. So see, your application start running. And I think the application uh, will be uh, like, uh, <clears throat> like uh, that. this is a simple React application. And uh, the application, you can access through the port number 3000, I think. See, it, you can access to the port to the local to the port number 3000 actually you can go to here and you can just copy this public ip of the my linux server where it is it's a dummy server just paste it and then give 3000 okay. your react application is loaded and it is running so this is not the uh, intention to show you this but what is the intention is that actually my intention is to show you that how npm will try to Resolve all kind of dependencies, whatever applications required, and it'll try to install all dependencies. Similarly, Java, whenever it needs any kind of a Spring uh, uh, Spring framework, it needs it needs a Hibernate framework. Any framework which a Java application is required, right? That the that Maven will take care of installing the dependencies. Similarly, for the .NET application, it requires a lot of dependencies. So NuGet is there. That that's an internet tool. Even you have to install that tool also. That tool tool will take care of installing all kind of dependencies where your .NET application requires. So all the dependencies are resolved by all these tools here. That's what we have many of the tools available, right? So that's what when you write a code, always the developer will take, check that even the depend, uh, even the, he also installed the tool because he needs the tool to install all the kind of a dependency, right? So now what happened guys? Now very big thing that when the developers develop the code, even he has installed all the tools required for downloading the dependencies and he has built the whole application. And the same application he has he has pushed put into some kind of a source code versioning code uh, to some kind of a source code versioning tool or source code versioning repository he has uploaded. Right? Now what happened, guys? See what things happen, you know, like see the code, first the code will be pulled from Git. Through the Jenkins, correct guys? Through the Jenkins. Good. That is the first step. Now what happened? The second step is that guys, actually, you need to build or the you need to build the package. You need to so from the code, from the code, you need to build the package or you need to build the library, build the package or build the binaries, not lab, uh, library, build the binaries. We say actually, right? And of course, what happened? Right? Like each and every developer whenever he is writing any of the application code right even he will write even the unit test case also even the developer will write the 
unit test cases unit test what is unit test means guys basically can anyone tell me if anyone has any idea on that what is a unit test case what what is a unit test actually unit test uh, unit test is also written by developer only devops engineer doesn't write any he doesn't write any kind of a unit test and all only the developer only will write it actually so what the unit test case will do unit test case is used to test your code itself so it means that whenever the developer he want to test whether whatever the code is written whether the code is perfect or not right he need to do some kind of a testing onto the code itself right so to test his code he has to write one more code and that code we call as a unit test actually suppose that like you are develop any uh, java application right so the same developer will write a unit test case in a java language itself he will write and then what he will do he will try to run that unit test case so that the test case should get passed once the unit test case get passed he will confirm that whatever the code is written is perfectly fine so whatever the uh, standards which he has uh, uh, adopted for writing the code right that standards are meeting he uh, that code whatever he has written is very uh, correct actually everything he can actually what happened right he will be doing so basically what happened right unit test cases are basically written by the developer it will test the the basic functionality of the code actually the basic functionality of the code whether whatever the code is written is there any bug or not there is no bug okay fine and after that is there any critical bugs are there or not yeah that will verify it and after that, what happened it will try to verify each and every execution of the uh, function uh, or the variable what is been used within the code right that everything what happened right this unit test case is going to verify it actually so that's what guys what happened is the developer will also write the unit cases even that unit test case should also should get executed as part of the build process when you are trying to build when the maven is building a code as part of the building code it will also build the unit test cases and it will also execute the unit test cases so once the unit test case is executed whatever the report you are getting right so after executing the unit test unit test the report the report will be shared to the developer see of course what happened right the developer what he will do guys he has a local machine he has written the whole code whole source code of, of his the application he has written plus he has even written the unit test case also the unit test also he has written it that is also code only and that code unit test also he will try to run in his local machine only to verify what the unit test is this is also code this will test the code what is written in the application similarly whenever in a developer is writing a c language or he is uh, using a c language he is writing a he is writing he is writing a code or for the application he will write the unit test cases in the c language itself guys so that he will test the code for testing the code he is writing one more code and that test unit test code will test the basic functionality of your application it will check all kind of a you know like a, uh, like what are the standards you are maintaining right for writing the code right each and every industry or each and every developer there is a set of standards you need to maintain it so it will try to check whether those standards are maintained or not so many things the unit test cases will do so that it will check that okay <coughs> there is no critical bug in that code and it is perfectly working fine once the unit test cases will get passed once the unit test get passed then only that whole code will be shared to the test engineer so so that the testing engineer or the uat engineer or as the performance engineer can do a further testing on that application if the unit test is getting failed if the report is failed that it means that there is an issue with the code so you cannot you cannot uh, consider that as a commit it means that whenever the unit test is failing right the devops engineer will reject that build he said that boss first you fix this issue man then you give me the proper code and you uh, once once the developer checks himself the unit test is passing then only he will upload this code into the git repository if it is failing right he will never upload the code itself so he he know that oh there is some issue with the code itself oh let me verify the will first let me verify the code actually like that guys he will try to understand is it clear guys till here so <coughs> so what happened guys so there are many terms are there like for example you have something like a static code analy uh, analyzer or static code analysis those things also i should tell you but i will tell you after some point of time so till here we have covered up to unit test cases actually so what i will do guys i will take another uh, 10 to 15 minutes more to explain about what is a unit test case actually so 
what is a unit testing what is a unit testing we'll try to understand now so till here are you okay guys how are you feeling are you feeling bored or it is interesting to understand or to learn see we are not come to the maven build tool at all we are just trying to understand what is the build what is the package and everything that's what we you know we try to understand all these things right so it is just like an introduction for you to understand the build process that's all tomorrow we will be seeing like how exactly the maven build tool work how gradle works there are many how exactly the ms build works that we we have to see one by one each and every build tool we have to understand in a very little bit in detail we need to learn but this is the basics everything right so what exactly what exactly you have to do right you have to do the unit testing also once the developer shares the unit test right so the unit test will also be uploaded into the uh, into the git source code repository only so once the developer has developed the code along with the code he is also uploading everything as a package as a bundle he is uploading into the git uh, into the git actually so the same the whole code is downloaded by your jenkins job and finally it will be provided to the build server now the build server like maven or any other tool right now it will try to compile the code as well as it will try to even run the unit test case also once the unit test case report is getting passed then only he will confirm that the whole code what the developer has given right it is perfectly working fine clear guys so now what we are doing that we are trying to understand what exactly the unit test case unit testing is so it will take another 15 minutes more but we will complete this and we will wind up today's session so what do you mean by unit testing so guys what is a unit testing means basically as i said right the developer himself has written the application to test this application to test this code he is writing one more code so what we say we say it uh, something like so test the code from the code itself so how is a test from the code base? He is basically writing a unit test actually. So that is a code only which he is writing. Correct? Okay. <coughs> okay. So once he runs the unit test actually, it will give you it will give you the report actually. It will give the report. So it will give the report. It will provide you the report. Either the report will be passed or it will be fail actually. So it will give the report. So either the report will be passed or it will be fail. That's all. So he has to even share that report to the developer also. Right? Either the report is either passed or fail. Next, the, out, the, the result of the exam of the unit test case, right? That I'm saying. Either it is for pass or fail. If it is fail, the whole build what is provided right that will be rejected by the devops engineer he will say that no first you fix the unit test it means that there's an issue with your code itself like that right so guys there is one more thing is there so apart from this guys what happened right you need to even verify what exactly the code coverage is doing like how much a percent of the code coverage has been taken care what is a code coverage we say so this is a new terminology which you are coming across now what is the code coverage i will explain you about this little after some time but try to understand now that okay there is something like you need to even verify the code coverage what do you mean by code coverage means percentage of the code percent of the code uh, uh how i can say percent of the code tested or tested from the unit test case actually like that so what is saying that what i'm trying to tell that it is nothing but it is a percentage of code touched or tested from unit test actually so we even we need to verify the code coverage also if the code coverage is always 90 percent or the above then only we will certify that the unit test case is passed if the code coverage is less than 90 percent usually that is the standard where industry maintain some companies maintain a 94%, 95% code coverage standards actually. But majority have seen that 90% of the code coverage, it need to provide a result of 90% of the code coverage. If that 90%, you're getting the value of 90% of code coverage, then only you will certify saying that, yeah, the code is properly worked. Uh, the, whatever the developer has given the code, right, the code is fine. So guys, to test all these things, unit test, right? Each and every language, it has its own, it has its own uh, test harness tools. Like for example, you are having a Python. 
So suppose you have written a Python code. So developer want to write some kind of a unit test and you want to test it. So is there any tool to test the Python code? What is written? Yes, there's a tool by name PyTest. So he has to use some tools actually. So what are those tools? So guys, there is a tool actually. So there is a tool. So we call that as a test harness tool. Test harness tools actually. Like for example, if you are using a Java. Okay, so we are using Java. So Java also what happened guys? There's a testing tool is that testing harness tool is there. So what is the testing harness tool by name? The, the tool name is J unit. What is it guys? There's a tool by name J unit. So this is what the tool which will be using to perform the execution of the unit tests actually. Okay, similarly, you have a, suppose you want to do a testing of your Python code. Python code. So you have a tool by name, what is it? PyTest. PyTest, PyTest. So this is a tool which you use to test the, the test the unit test cases for your Python code. So PyTest is a harness tool which we use actually. So similarly, we have a, a uh, for the .NET application guys, for the .NET application, uh, what is it guys for the .NET, I've forgotten. Uh, for the .NET, what is it? Uh, it is a N unit, yes, it's a N unit. So N unit is a harness tool which is used for testing all the unit test cases actually. Similarly, we have something as a Java script actually. Suppose you written a code in a Java script actually. Java script actually. So what is it? What are the tools are available guys? There are famous tools are there. One is a, a, a Jasmine and other is a Mo Mocha actually. Mocha is a tool, M-O-C-H-A, Mocha. And there's one more tool by name Jasmine. So these are the test harness tools which are used for testing the unit test cases which you have written in your JavaScript, which you have written using JavaScript. Okay, guys. So this is what it is. Now, apart from this, guys, apart from this unit test, right? You need to have some kind of testing also. In the next session, I'll be showing some examples. Right, I will show you. Like, suppose I have written a code in Python. How I can vary? How I can run the unit test cases with the help of a PyTest? PyTest will run or it will verify the unit test execution and give the result. Similarly, when you're writing a Java code, right? So you'll be writing a unit test cases that will be get executed by the J unit tool. Actually, similarly for the .NET, similar like JavaScript, like that for each and every uh, programming language, right? You have a particular testing test harness tools are there. Now, so basically, out of from this guys, actually. Apart from this, actually, what happened, right? There is a something as a static code analysis. There's one more thing. We call it as a static code analysis. <clears throat> so we have a something as a static code analysis. Some of you might know about this. What is static code analysis? <laughs> So what the static code analysis will do, guys? Uh, sorry, I don't have space here. I will just write it down here in a small, right? Uh, here, I'll write it down here. Right. You have something known as a, uh, what do you say? We have something known as a code quality report checking. Code quality reports, actually. So. It will try to check the code quality report. So, for example, sometimes what happens, right? Uh, when you're running the code, right? When you are uh, checking the code, right? The developer's code, you will get a lot of warnings. Uh, sometimes you will get some critical warnings you'll get. Sometimes you'll get like a infos, information or info, right? These are nothing but this will give some kind of a reporting to you. So, how you'll get uh, the static code analysis, right? There are various tools are there, right? For example, guys, for when you are uh, working on uh, the Python, right? Application, right? You will be using something like a PyCharm. Right, Python tool you'll be using, or Python, uh, like uh, it is kind of an Eclipse, right? It's a tool which you'll be using to write the like the whole uh, no uh, Python code actually. You know, like when you are developing or when you are writing a code, right? You know, like the 
is a pipe charm tool itself is so clever that it will generate the warnings you know it will generate the information info it will generate the critical right it will based on some standard actually it gives you the information like this now what happened right if you are if you are taking the whole code of the python which the developer java which the python developer has written right and if you try to open that code in the pycharm right it will show all kind of the information now warning is something like oh there is some kind of an update is needed into the code okay the code will work but yeah in the upcoming future right might be the code might face an issue so it will throw an warning maybe like for example you have you have used uh, suppose for example i'm just saying like for example you have used a django some version you use like uh, 8.2 version you use right maybe in the upcoming right the python also when the python version is also increasing even you need to even upgrade your django also so there what happened a warning will throw it will throw in a warning saying that please upgrade uh, in the next release please upgrade a django from some one version or other version so that the code will start working like that so it will give a initial warning that's all right now the code will execute but it will give a warning it is for the future right what exactly so the devops engineer can say that hey to the developer saying that hey is there anything where, where you can work on this so that the warnings can be reduced or one warnings can be avoided similarly some kind of information is given similarly if there is a issue with the code and there is some critical uh, like uh, you know warning should be given or critical uh, uh, you know critical message will come so there you will straight away say to the developer hey i am getting this issue man which showing as a critical so it means that there is an issue with your code only so devops engineer based on the code quality report right he can give the feedback to the developers so that is nothing but your static code analysis right and guys in the industry what happened nowadays you might have heard that in the industry right they are using something like a quality gates have you heard of it this quality gates some of you have might have heard it quality gates most of the industries are setting up all the quality gates actually they are setting a lot of gates actually so what this quality gates will do that what the quality gates says that what is acceptable so what the quality uh, gate says what it means that it means that what is acceptable so what is acceptable so whatever the code is given by the developer right what and all is acceptable or what am, is acceptable like for example for example there should not be no critical message should come like no criticals so whatever they i'm saying no critical no critical should be there when the quality gets as well as the code coverage should be above 90% then only what happened right i will accept your code if the quality gets is throwing another if there are some critical and if the code coverage is 89% so what happened straight away you will reject that code so whatever the output you are getting through quality gets right based on that also the devops engineer will give a feedback to the to the developer saying that hey my quality gets is not meeting the standard the code coverage is not coming to a 90 or above 90% it is coming to 87% or 89% hence i am rejecting your commit like that what happened the devops engineer will will get back to the dev developers actually so this is some kind of a standard where each and every company is uh, you know like uh, is adopting now actually quality gets and all it is it is it's like an optional guys actually it is not really mandatory but nowadays what happened every company is setting up the quality gates for so before it actually the code goes to the production server or some kind of a not production uat server or into the test environment right it has to pass through all the quality gates once it passes don't only you will allow that code to get deployed into the test environment so that the testing engineers can do testing for the testing activity if the quality gate itself will fail right they will never allow that code to be even committed in the git also they will say that you straight away say that i am discarding that commit you uh, develop the code again you fix all the issues raise one more commit one more request then we will look into it like that the devops engineer will say got it so this is something guys which we which we doing in a unit testing so anything here if suppose like if suppose assume that the build itself got failed here here while compiling the build itself got failed it means that the whole build process is failed okay so here what happened in the first state itself while building the when the maven code is building here itself if it is got failed right then the whole build is rejected okay fine if the build is get passed here somehow because of some issue the dependency is not been downloaded properly then also the build will fail okay suppose here the build is also build up it means that the whole, the, the 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 code is also the binary it got converted to the binary by the build tool as well as all the dependencies also downloaded perfect without any issues but in the last phase the unit test is getting failed then also also you will reject the build 
so all these three things should pass guys the bill should go successfully it means that uh, the maven to should compile the code it should uh, download all dependencies what is needed for your application successfully without any issue then at the end phase that the unit test also should get passed once all these three criteria are getting passed then only you will certify that the build whatever the build or the code which is given by the developer is perfectly working fine so guys i hope that the message is clear for you you understood what i'm trying to tell you right correct so this is all about the build process so tomorrow in session what i will be doing right i'll be showing you some of the basic uh, stuff like with the help of the unit test suppose i i'll be writing some small python code by installing the py test how i can verify the unit testing for my python code tomorrow we'll start from there okay and then what happen right we will go into understanding about more about our maven build tool so how exactly the maven works how to install the maven what is the maven home directory right what are the different configuration for the maven how i can build any java code using maven and all right what are repository what is centralized repository what is remote repository what is local repository there are so many nice concepts are there what is pom what is super pom what are build profiles you know like that you know that, uh, that this topic is never ending as it is a such a vast topic actually so we can spend a lot of days actually on this only maven but i will see that at least minimum two sessions i will try to cover whatever i want to explain right i will cover about the maven tool everything in two sessions actually so maybe tomorrow session sundays as well as next saturday i'll be cover i'll be completing the maven once i complete the maven then what happened that i will try to uh, uh, i'll try to go with some kind of artifactory nexus artifactory or jfork artifactory how to configure how to integrate with jenkins and how to do it everything we will see in the upcoming sessions is it clear guys so guys i hope that you understood it now uh, i think it's already too much so i'll not be continuing right i'll stop it now and uh, tomorrow we will uh, again we'll connect and we will continue from where we have left so guys any doubts till here so i hope you understood you like this session you understood some basic at least some basics you understood today and yes, uh, yeah and uh, uh, because this is a stepping stone for you to understand maven gradle any build tool tomorrow guys it is immutable for you now it is immutable i am not at all worried about any build tool i need a commands that's all you go to join any company it could be any any kind of a uh, language they might use they might use go language they might use python language they might use java you are not worried about the what uh, what tool or what language they're using you're only worried about oh, what are the commands which i need to use in my jenkins for building that project or building that application okay you give me the commands hey developer you give me the commands that's what you will say so now your interest is to how to integrate the tool with your jenkins server how to integrate this build tool with the jenkins server how to write a ply pipeline so that i can try to download the code from the git and try to give to the build server this is what the devops unit will do that's all devops unit will not break it as oh, what is this unit test what the code he has written what the application he will not do all such activity he is not interested in doing that he he won't do all such activity so whether the coding is required for the devops unit no coding is required here guys so what is most of the thing it is required configuring that tool and integration of the tool within the pipeline or within the tools within the tools is required by the devops engineer at the end actually and once it is all done you need to even provide the report to the developer you need to send the report also whatever the build has been completed right so that you need to provide the report also right that's all guys so we will continue from tomorrow from the unit test itself from here itself as i said right we'll do it hmm? okay guys chalo so guys one more thing guys uh, i want to ask before winding up uh, tomorrow are you okay if we have a session at 11 o'clock morning yes sir instead of keeping the time we'll have a morning uh, 11 uh, i will i will try to take two hours guys tomorrow please sit for two hours 11 to 1 we will cover have a heavy breakfast and sit in the class so that tomorrow i'll try to cover as much as possible in uh, maven actually so that it will be nice for you all to learn in a maven uh, you know in a very good way that you know how exactly maven work how to configure install it because it's a very lengthy topic actually i need a you know, longer time actually for completing okay fine guys chalo then thank you all thanks for joining so tomorrow we'll meet at 11 o'clock 11 a.m morning okay okay thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. thank you all bye yeah